What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from D&D TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of you all who will, all of that information is in the description box below. Also, go over to my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speaks TV. Make sure you subscribe over there and hit that little bell so you get notifications when I drop a new video. Now, let's get into this topic. Alright, now this video is for educational purposes, so as I approach this topic with respect, I need you all to please, please, please be respectful in my comment section. Thanks. Alright, now this story comes out of Texas, Dallas, Texas, out there in Oak Cliff. Now you all remember I started a series a while back called Go Back and Get Them, where I go back and I get old stories that I've done and I give you an update or a new perspective on that story, and I think I'll be doing more of those in the future. Now, out of many videos that I've done on YouTube, there are some videos that I still get comments and even letters about, and many people want updates on those stories. And one of those videos is the video I did on Bishop Derek Favors out of Texas. Now, you all remember the story of Bishop Derek Favors, who was a holiness preacher that was known for his energetic sermons and his gregarious personality and his miraculous laying on of hands. Bishop Derek Favors was the husband to First Lady Michelle Favors and the father of four. Now, with a beautiful family and a thriving ministry and growing popularity in the Dallas area, many thought that Bishop Derek Favors was on the road to great success. However, that all ended when Bishop Derek Favors was found unresponsive in the Star Motel, which is now the Icon Motel in Dallas, Texas. Now, when the news got around town of Bishop Derek Favors' passing at the Star Motel, many people wondered why did a bishop who lived in or near the area where the motel resides with his wife and children need to go to a motel room to stay for a couple of days? Because many of you all remember, a Star Motel staff member confirmed with the Christian Post that Bishop Derek Favors checked in on a Monday night and he was scheduled to check out at 11 a.m. on Wednesday, but he was found unresponsive in his room. The staff at the motel also said during the investigation, and they confirmed with the Christian Post, that article is still up if you all want to go over there and read it, they confirmed with the Christian Post that narcotics were found in the bishop's room, and it is believed that this is not the first time that the bishop visited the Star Motel. Now, when Bishop Derek Favors passed, other bloggers and vloggers and news outlets at that time talked about other adult objects that were found in the motel room, and some stated that other individuals had visited the hotel room as well. Now, when I looked on reviews at the motel at that time, there were a couple of people who left reviews saying that the motel was kind of seedy and that there were a lot of illegal activities that take place there. Now, many people in the town wondered, why would a somewhat prominent bishop with a wonderful family and a growing ministry in the Dallas area jeopardize it all by living a double life? And my answer to that question is, is that there are just some things in life that we will never have the answers to. Now, in the video I did on Bishop Derek Favors a couple of years ago, I said in that video, how could his wife, First Lady Michelle, not know that her husband was involved in these kinds of activities? And I went on to say something like, she had to know because women have intuition. And how could someone live in your house and they want to stay in a motel room instead of at home? To me, that's a red flag. But here's the thing. I don't know that she knew that he was going to a motel. He could have told her that he was going out of town to preach at another church. What I've come to realize is that sometimes people just don't know what's going on with their loved ones or some people just turn a blind eye because they don't want to face the truth. Now, there were many people who wanted to know what happened to Bishop Derek Favor's church and his family. Well, I'll tell you. After the passing of Bishop Derek Favors, his wife was installed as senior pastor of Full Gospel Tabernacle Church Incorporated, and she appears to be doing a great job leading the church. And his children have all grown up, and they've gone on to live productive lives. Now, since the passing of Bishop Derek Favors, I have watched that ministry and how Pastor Michelle Favors and the faithful members of that congregation work hard to maintain and try to rebuild the image of that ministry after the scandal. I'm sure it hasn't been easy. However, Pastor Michelle Favors and the congregation, they are strong and they're still holding on. Now look, I know there are some of you who are going to say, Dawson, women are not supposed to preach. They're not supposed to be in authority over men. And then there are some women and men who will argue that. 
Look, I'm not going back and forth with y'all. I'm not debating that topic. But what I will say is this. What's happening in a lot of these religious institutions is that a lot of men are dropping the ball and women are picking up that ball and they're going on with the work of the Lord. I've seen this so many times in church. The pastor has a scandal or the pastor passes away. It's always the women that pick up the baton and they continue to go on with ministry. As I've said before in many videos, the individuals who get hurt the most in these religious institutions are women and children. However, when unfortunate events or scandals happen in religious institutions, it's usually the women that step up to the plate to clean up the mess. Now, in the first video I did on Bishop Derek Favors, I asked the question, why did he not have people or a person that he could talk to about his deepest, darkest secrets or his struggles? And many people got on my case for asking that question. I don't care. I still stand by what I said. I believe that when you're in a leadership position and people are looking up to you and, and you're an authority figure, you need someone to talk to, even if it's a therapist, that you can be vulnerable with. Now, you know that I am an advocate for therapy and I will be pushing that on this show. Go get help. We all need someone in our lives that we can be honest with, who's not impressed with our money or our degrees or our titles or what celebrities or wealthy people we know. Someone that can look you in your eye and tell you the truth because they love you and care about your well-being. Now, I stand ten toes down on that. We all need someone to talk to. And I'm going to hit you with this one. Some people who will love you unconditionally and truly care about your well-being may not even go to church. Take a breath. Well, what do you mean, Dawson? I mean that just because people go to church and they sit in a pew, that don't mean they give a damn about you. Take another breath. Let it marinate. Just because people go to church and they sit in a pew, that don't mean they give a damn about you. Now, that's a Dawson original. Look, we need at least one person. One person that we can be real with in our lives, that we can be open and honest with about everything. That's what I wish for all of you, that you have that one person that you can talk to about anything and they don't judge you and they still love you and they care about your well-being. Now, there are some people who may say, Dawson, this is just a typical story. There are many men and women who go to these religious institutions and they're living devil lives. Yeah, I know. And what I'm trying to tell you is that you don't have to. Well, what do you mean, Dawson? Let me tell you. If you are a pastor, a bishop, a prophet, a prophetess, a teacher, an elder, whatever your title is, a superintendent in the church or just a church member, don't let these people in churches push you to lie about stuff that you know you're still dealing with and you're not free from. What are you talking about, Dawson? Let me give you a couple examples. If you're not delivered, as the church say, you know, they want you delivered from being gay or lesbian or whatever. Don't get up there and tell people that you are because the church is going to use you as a poster child for other people who are gay, lesbian, the change is possible. And then if you get caught doing something that you said you were delivered from, the people are going to ask the question, well, did the deliverance not take? What happened? Do you need to get delivered all over again? How many times do you need to be delivered? I mean, come on, this is a real show. We're going to talk some real stuff today. That's why when people write me and they say, Dawson, this person has gone back to do something that they said they'd never do again. Or Dawson, the prophetess, the prophetess done gone back to be a lesbian again. We need to get on our knees and pray. No, you pray. You get on your knees and you pray for her, then go buy her a box of dental dams because she going to need them when she on her knees. And hell, go get her some knee pads while you're at it. Now, now look, see, I feel old mess of spirit coming on me. I'm trying to do right. Help me, Lord. Help me. Even if you're a person that's struggling with substance abuse, find that person or that counselor who deals with people that have substance issues that can help you. And that goes for people who are dealing with mental issues. Don't get up there in the pulpit and lie to the church. And tell them that you're delivered from depression or anxiety or whatever. Because you've got to deal with those issues when you go home. Those people are not going to be around you when you go home. And remember what I told you. If your mind's not right, you're not right. And that goes also for people who you know you're not ready to get married. 
You know that you're not just going to be committed to one woman or one man. You know what you do. Matter of fact, some of you were courting people, you were dating, and you were cheating during that time. And now you think once you get married and put a ring on your finger, it's just miraculously going to change everything? No. If you were whoring before you got married, you're going to be a whore when you get married. What you do in... (laughs) Come on, y'all. Y'all know this. I'm just the only one who's going to tell the truth. What you did before you got married, if you don't change when you're single, before you say I do, you're going to do it when you get married. A ring is not going to stop you from cheating. You're just going to take it off when you cheat. And some of you are so bold, you'll cheat with it on. Now, y'all know I'm telling the truth. I'm not making this stuff up. This is what's going on in religious institutions today, not 10, 20 years ago, today. Now, I received a letter from someone that worked with Bishop Derek Favors before he became a full-time minister. This man sent me a poignant letter, and I want to read some of it to you. Now, I'm not going to read all of this letter because it is long, but I am going to read some of it, all right? And the letter reads as follows. Hello, Dawson. I came across your YouTube channel and I have listened to several of your videos and I agree with you, especially with the question about people discerning of relationships with pastors and ministers. I knew Derek Favor since 1999 as we both worked in the hotel industry. He was much younger than I, but he became a part of a group of black hotel industry people in Dallas that a friend of mine and I started. Our friendship was not deep. But having been in ministry and in leadership, I would talk to him from time to time during our lunches with the group we called the Cousins Lunch. He was a smart guy, but he seemed to have some issues with relationships outside of his marriage. Friends in the industry would try to talk to me about him and things that they knew, but I chose to stay in my own lane. In May of 2012, we saw each other at the Byron Nelson. That's a golf tournament for those of you who don't know out in Dallas. And he began to tell me that he had been in an accident. He also began to share that his church wanted him to take over as pastor. We discussed it and I ultimately gave him this advice. Number one, find real accountability. Someone who can know when you're being truthful or not and would love you without judgment, offer correction and direction. Number two, Find someone that can call you by your name, that you can trust, who you can talk to about what's going on in your life. Your ish, because he cursed, will find you if you don't deal with it. And number three, be humble. And the man goes on to write, We had mutual contacts as he was flipping real estate and referred a contractor to me. Clearly his struggles got the best of him in the end. I have gotten lots of secondhand details on what he was involved in. Derek Favors worked in the hotel industry prior to becoming a pastor full time. So if he needed a hotel, there were lots of people he could have called versus renting out a motel by the hour in one of the lowest rent areas in the city. I just wasn't aware that he was involved in these things that led up to his death. He had within a year retired from his hotel career and was not in a place that required a structured environment and the possibility of random testing for substance abuse. And he goes on to say, I too have seen many things in church. I wish you continued success, Dawson. Now, I'm off of this, you all. But what I want to say to all of my listeners is this. Find that one person that you can talk to. Please, please, please do it for yourself. You don't have to struggle alone. To the family, friends, and associates of Pastor Derek Favors, you all have my condolences. And I wish you all continued success to First Lady Michelle Favors and his children. Now get down in the comment section. Let me know what you all think about this video. Until next time, it's your guy Dawson. Take care of yourself and each other. Peace.